Welcome to week six of my 100 collage papers. This week's theme is simple stuff from around the house, starting with toilet paper tubes. I cut this one in half and folded it into some interesting shapes, opened it up a little to use as a stamp. I did bend both halves. And I'm using inexpensive acrylic craft paint. I started with a sheet of cardstock and a sheet of tissue paper to compare. Just dip the toilet paper tubes in the paint and stamp however you feel. It was fun. The tissue paper was a little trickier because the toilet paper tube paint tended to stick to it more. I got it pretty well full, and I also wanted to play with a wet effect on the cardstock, so I traded it out and sprayed the second sheet with a decent amount of water and had fun stamping again. Then sprayed it with some more water to make the paint run a little more, so you get a less defined, and what adjective would you use? A dreamier look? Definitely more organic. So there you have collage paper number 33, or papers, if you will, two opaque and one translucent. Collage paper number 34 also uses an expensive acrylic craft paint and a toilet paper to cut in half. This time I will be cutting little strips partway up for lack of a better way to articulate it at the moment, to create a tool like I've seen kids use to create fireworks or sometimes flowers. You don't have to be a kid to enjoy art projects that seem to be designed for kids. I spread out the bristles or tines or spikes or however you would like to Think of them in your head. I got nothing for you right now. And just stamp all over your paper. Again, however feels interesting and good to you. I'm not actively trying to create a particular look, just exploring what look I can create with the tool I made. Again, I will be trying this dry and with water for a softer look. I know I have mentioned before what an invaluable tool a water spray bottle is for mixed media art. And let's move on to smaller bristles. I guess we could call them since it's kind of a paintbrush we are using this for. Because of the different shape of this sort of brush, because of the length of its bristles, I had to use it a little differently. And I really enjoyed where this one led and the different look it created. I definitely wouldn't look at this and think it was made with a toilet paper tube. Again, both in dry and wet. And again, it's also interesting to see the similar yet different look. I really like the areas where you can see the little spiky bits. <laughs> Who knew you could create so many different looks with a toilet paper tube? And the next two are going to look way different. I don't know about you, but I think the different homemade brush slash mark making tools I've seen different people using are really cool. And I decided to experiment with my shorter bristled tube and make it into a mini mark making brush for collage paper number 35. Cut it down rolled it up tight 
and I'm using Mars Black Liquitex Fluid Acrylic for an inky look. A first stroke to get a feel for the marks this leaves. I really love the way this looks. And I definitely want to play around more with making my own mark making tools out of various things. I will definitely use a toilet paper tube again. Again, would you look at this and think it was made with a toilet paper tube? I certainly wouldn't. A toilet paper tube mark making brush does not have a long lifespan, but that's okay. Toilet paper is something I'm going to keep using and you probably are too. So toilet paper tubes are typically readily available. I have to say this mark making is another one of the ones that is particularly relaxing, therapeutic. It's one that it's easy to get lost in flow in, to just be able to let yourself get absorbed in the process in the movement of the paint on the paper and allow your mind to just quiet in the process. So as I'm recording this voiceover for the long video for this week, I'm thinking this might be a great project for Better With Art. The previous two toilet paper projects are fun and they create fun effects and will be interesting collage fodder. But yeah, like I said, this one is one that lends itself to getting lost in, to being able to get distracted from all those other things. Yes, art making in general is very good for my mental health and to give my brain a chance to relax from all the other stuff. But there are some practices, some projects that are just inherently more relaxing, have more of a natural flow within them that encourages that flow state. So if you only try one of this week's seven types of papers, I would encourage you to try this one, even if it isn't for collage paper. Not only did I love the way this one felt, I love the way it looks and I had to try it on tissue paper to use like my acemic writing or lines. I had to make a new brush and learned I should have stuck with the shorter bristles. But I did know when I started that Mars Black Fluid Acrylic is ideal. As with paper 33, working on the dry tissue paper can be a little trickier because what you're working with drags on the paper. So I did have to hold it in place. I'd really gotten into the circles and it was easy to just keep using that on the tissue paper. The benefit being I love the look and repetitive motion is one of those things that helps get us into the flow state. But yes, the draggy paper impeded that a bit, <laughs> but that's okay. Everything I do doesn't have to be fulfilling on every level. <laughs> and boy, if we expect that, we are going to be permanently disappointed. I really love this inky look and am looking forward to using it as a background in a tissue paper collage or in floating layers. By the end of this paper, this brush had pretty much had it and I also realized that part of my problem was the length of the so-called bristles. So I cut a new short one like the shorter one I used on the cover stock. I did move on to create 
some circles that are separate on the paper so they could more easily be used as features in layers as opposed to something I see as a layer itself. This edit makes it look like I just turned that piece of tissue paper over, which of course I didn't, but I did play with some organic lines to create another interesting layer sheet. Yes, homemade mark making tools, mark making brushes, definitely a keeper, and I love the toilet paper tube for it. Moving on to collage paper 36, another with a toilet paper tube. I'll be using rubber bands to create a texture roller, making sure to get them on untwisted, but not even because I want interesting, less geometric straight lines, but looser and more organic. That one was loose, so I pulled it off. I happened to have rubber bands that were just the right size left over from a paper that went horribly wrong if I wanted it to be what it was supposed to be, but came out really interesting and is one of my most popular. Paper number 14. There are things I learned from it to take forward. One person said it looked like a burnt anchovy pizza, which not, not a look I'm going for but fun. The roller can be used either to remove paint as on the gel plate or lay paint down which can be done on the gel plate or paper. So yes this one although I'm using the gel plate you don't need a gel plate for. I'm just demonstrating what you can do with it on both. The hardest part was maintaining enough pressure on the bottom of the tube, the part that was touching the paint or the paper. I have seen people put paper towel tubes on a paint roller and can see how that would be useful. You can use other things to create texture on toilet paper or paper towel tubes. Rubber bands, convenient, had around. As there was some purple with stripes left on the plate, I decided to do a second pull of it with some yellow paint. Varied textures can be cool for layered gel plate prints. I decided to try the Liquitex Basics Fluid Acrylic in Mars Black next and have to say that maintaining sufficient pressure on the gel plate and keeping the roller going straight was more difficult with the, well, slimier <laughs> fluid acrylic. Slipperier. Let's go with slipperier. But I think that looks really interesting over the yellow. Trying to pull the black with some green and blue. As I said, things like this are great for layers, but also just straight up texture. I would like to go across some of the vertical lines with horizontal lines and create sort of a woven look next. For collage paper 37, I shifted gears to an inexpensive gel play alternative for mono printing, aluminum foil. Again, I used the inexpensive acrylic craft paint, this time in turquoise and silver. I thought it would create an interesting blend. It's very important to get the paint distributed in a very thin layer. If it's too thick, you'll just end up with a blobby mush of paint on your paper instead of the design that you make in the paint. Q-tips are ideal for this, and obviously you can be way more ornate, but this is just the very basics of what you can do with aluminum foil mono printing. You don't have to use a brayer. I also will be using a brush later. I am making this pull on heavy cardstock. The way you spread your paint defines the texture. I am laying down another thin layer of silver to create another layer of texture over my turquoise and silver. Trying to make sure my original print is at least kind of lined up, won't be perfect, and another layer. With a fun look, I went back to the turquoise and this time, yes, the paintbrush instead of the brayer, and I used my toilet paper tube from yesterday's paper to create lines in the paint and over onto the aluminum foil. I thought it would create a fun look. What happened though was Although a thin layer is very important, if it's too thin, it will dry out and not pull. 
which as you can see is exactly what happened. I decided to add a half layer to this half layer. I was stubbornly trying to keep the aluminum foil at the right angle for the camera and finally decided to make it way easier on myself. You can see how I get my thumbs in the paint and see why a roller would be a good idea, but I'm also a strong proponent of working with what we have. And let's see what we get. It's a concept that deserves further investigation sometime. I played around with seeing what could be pulled of the dry paint and creating texture with my paintbrush. I think that's interesting, especially where the brush strokes are going against each other. I tried the spritz of alcohol and at first didn't notice the effect that it had had, but it did have some. You can use a baby wipe to wipe dry paint off your aluminum foil. As I said, the dry layers don't pull up with another layer of paint like it does on the gel plate. Here's another example of what you can do with paintbrush texture and alcohol. And you don't have to just remove paint to create your designs. You can paint on the aluminum foil. And if you're painting thinly like this, just be sure you don't wait too long and let it dry. It's texture, but smooth. So those were some basics of how we can use aluminum foil for mono printing. Have some fun with it. So the straight up total experiment for collage paper 38 is magazine image transfer on aluminum foil. I accidentally grabbed the ivory black instead of my typical Payne's gray Liquitex Basics acrylic, spread it out thinly and as evenly as I could. I was really struggling to make things smooth, which with the regular mono printing is fine. It creates a different texture. Not so great for image transfer, however. I did pull out a second brayer and I think that may be key to how this ended up working as it made the layer even thinner. As I have mentioned before, high contrast images with good differentiation between dark and light are key. Cutting out the earthquake, uh, smoothing down the page. Starting to pull this up didn't seem to be going well. I seem to be leaving paper, so I started from the top and, well, to be honest, I was kind of amazed at how this looks. It works a little differently than image transfers on the gel plate. I wasn't quite sure what to do with this. It seemed pretty dry to just try to pull it, but at the same time, I knew that dry paint wouldn't pull with wet. So I went ahead and used a sheet of wet strength tissue paper. And again, I was really surprised by the good result. I love this look. Here is a clearer look at it over paper. I regret that I destroyed it when trying to adhere it to one of my favorite pieces of collage paper. It turns out that this image was not color fast when being adhered with golden glazing liquid, which is what I use for my tissue paper collage. So now I have learned that aluminum foil image transfers on wet strength tissue paper are not water resistant, which makes me wonder about using wet strength tissue paper in other collage. I just accidentally wiped her face off trying to get bubbles out from under the tissue paper. Before I had tried to work with that image transfer, I had tried to pull the paint that was left on the aluminum foil with some other paint as I would on the gel plate. I did get too much paint, which is something I do far too often. It did actually pull up some of the darker color, so I guess there is a possibility you may be able to pull up some dry paint from the aluminum foil. I'm not sure if I will mess around with trying with that again. At least it won't be anytime soon because, well, I'm really, really busy. But there definitely is a place for aluminum foil in image transfers for some interesting indistinct looks. 
as I had tried wet strength tissue paper, I of course had to try the process with regular tissue paper. The aluminum foil looked a little different, but the tissue paper, well, the tissue paper was again, awesome. Collage Paper 39 is trying aluminum foil image transfer on cardstock. I intended to also use printer paper, but I did not. I did again use the Liquitex Basics Ivory Black as I knew it worked. High contrast image as you may have noticed, but I should have realized there were too many details. And it was pretty clear from the image as it was being pulled up that I hadn't gotten enough paint and therefore hadn't transferred the image. I decided to try to pull with the cardstock, but yeah, nah. But I thought, hmm, let's see what happens if I turn it over. And since there's hardly any paint on the image, let's try it again. As I pulled up the paper, I could tell things were going much better than last time. And I actually left an image on the aluminum foil. Still not an ideal one. Card stock again, and there's paint on the paper, which is good. Also that it kind of sticks. That's actually also a good sign. And an image. But yes, the face was not just a little too detailed. The shadows, the shadows were bad, but I failed to notice. I had another high contrast image, so trying again with the cardstock. I forgot to mention that, again, all of the images are from Town & Country magazines, discarded from my local library within the last year. This one, the aluminum foil, didn't show much, but I could tell there was an image there. This one, there's definitely an image. The shadows are a little weird, but still, it's a pretty interesting pull. As I said, aluminum foil definitely has a place in image transfers, but all image transfers are unpredictable and can be, well, persnickety. You can never be exactly sure how it will turn out. Thank you for joining me for seven more collage papers. Give a thumbs up if you feel inspired to make some of your own art and be sure to subscribe. There are 61 collage papers to go.